Let's make a dog coat. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this dog coat. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I try to release a new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects, tips and tricks, mystery box giveaways, live tutorials. I have a lot of fun with it. I hope you do too. So you're gonna wanna subscribe so you don't miss out. The pattern for this dog coat is actually free. I will include the link to this free pattern here at the bottom of the screen. All you have to do is pause the video, write that down, go to the website, print off the pattern and be ready to crochet with me. I will also include a link to this pattern in both the description section and the comment section below this video. So all you have to do is click on the pattern, print it off and be ready to go. There are actually four different sizes to this dog pattern. There's a small, medium, large, and an extra large size. In the pattern, as I'm going along, I will mention at this point, you will deviate this count, this count, this count, letting you stay on track with whatever size dog coat you want to make. I will also explain why these dimensions are such. So if you want to make an even larger dog coat or a smaller dog coat opposed to what I am making, you can absolutely figure that out for yourself. All right, once you are ready to go, let's head over to what materials you're gonna need to make this dog coat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The materials that you're going to need for this crochet dog coat will include a size four weight yarn, worsted medium Erin 1012 ply 8WPI sized yarn. Pick a yarn that is easy to wash because this is going to be a dog coat. So you wanna make sure that it is easy to just throw in the wash, easy care instructions. I prefer 100% acrylic yarns or an acrylic type yarn that will be easy to wash. I did make this coat in a 100% cotton yarn. This is Lily Sugar and Cream, and there was no give to it. So I couldn't even get it on my puppy. There are 100% cotton yarns that you could use that have a little more give, that might be a little more forgiving and comfortable for puppy, but right now with what I made with this 100% cotton yarn, I don't recommend it. All right, so going with something that has a little more flexibility. You'll need two different crochet hooks, a smaller crochet hook and a larger crochet hook. The difference in size here is only 0.5 of a size. I have a size F5 or a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. You could also find or use a 4.00 millimeter crochet hook. That is what the pattern calls for is a four. So an F and then a G. And this is a G6 or a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook or a 4.00 millimeter crochet hook. Just keep in mind, so this is an F and a G. It's the, next, the size right next to each other or a half size difference. That's what you're going for right there. You're gonna need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, tapestry needle to weave in your ends at the end of the project. And you will absolutely want a tape measure, need a tape measure, whether it's a ruler or a tape measure you're gonna need that. All right, once you've gathered up all of your materials, let's head straight over to actually making our crochet dog coat. Looking at the pattern itself, you will see that there are different measurements, different dog sweater sizes that you can make. So you're gonna take that tape measure of yours and you're going to start by measuring your dog's chest right underneath his armpits, okay, or her armpits. That is going to give you the best dimension in inches and in centimeters on which size you're going to want to make your puppy. We begin with the smaller crochet hook and the yarn that we're gonna use. We're gonna begin with the neck ribbing. So this is gonna go around the neck of your puppy or adult dog. <laughs> so hopefully you have taken your tape measure and got either taken the measurement of your dog, know if you're making a small, medium, large, or extra large size sweater. If you have a dog that's in between sizes or much larger than this, you're just going to take your tape measure, go around very loosely the neck of your puppy to decide how long you're going to need to make that neck ribbing, okay? So smaller crochet hook, the yarn we're using for the neck ribbing, long enough tail for us to weave in our ends, 
create a slip knot, attach our crochet hook. We're ready to begin. You start by chaining eight loosely. So that just means try not to be too tight with this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. For row one of our neck ribbing, we're going to single crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. So looking at our Vs, we got one, two, single crochet in that second chain, and then one single crochet in each chain all the way across. You will end with a total of seven single crochet stitches. Great. Perfect. At the end here, to get to row two, we will chain one, turn our work. Now for row two, we're going to single crochet in the back loop only. So looking at our stitches, we will turn to the top so we can see our V stitches. See the V right here? We're going to take our crochet hook put our crochet hook in the middle of that V-stitch and only go through that back loop only, leaving the front loop alone. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So you're going to single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch all the way across. You will end with a total of seven single crochet back loop only. Great, once you reach the end, all you're doing for the rest of this neck ribbing is chaining one, turning your work, and making one single crochet back loop only in each stitch all the way across. You're going to repeat this pattern until you've reached the full length of the neck measurement that you measured out. Now the pattern does give you an idea of how many rows that will be. You're going to end with a total of if you're making a small, it'll be 33 rows. If you're making a medium, it will be a total of 49 rows. If you're making a large, total of 73 rows. And if you're making an extra large, it'll be a total of 85 rows. I know that it says repeat last row this many times. I'm just helping you out. You wanna make sure that you have this many rows if you're making that particular size. All right, so we have two. I will meet you at your final row to show you what we do next. All right, last stitch of that last row for our neck ribbing. Perfect, okay, we do not stop here. We're actually going to remove the smaller crochet hook, attach the larger crochet hook, perfect. Tighten up your tension on this crochet hook. You'll chain three, one, two, three, and now we'll actually take the work and move it sideways. Great, the next section is done. We're now going to move on to the chest section of this dog coat. The chain three counts as our first double crochet and we'll actually take the place of the first row or the first side of this row. We're going to be crocheting along the sides of each row and building up on this dog coat. That is one. So next row here. If you aren't sure how to count your rows, look at these peaks. Each peak has one row on one side and one row on the other side. So this side right here already has a stitch. So we will make our first double crochet stitch on the side of row number two. Double crochet. Okay, looking at the peak. This side of the peak, double crochet. Other side of the peak, double crochet. 
All right, depending on how many rows you made for your neck, you're going to make that many stitches on the side of the neck piece. So if you made a small, you will end with a total of 33 double crochets. That includes this guy right here. The chain three is your first double crochet stitch. If you are making a medium, you'll make a total of 49 double crochet stitches. A large will be 73 double crochet stitches and an extra large will be 85 double crochet stitches. And of course, if you made a larger size than the extra large in the pattern, you're just gonna again make one double crochet stitch on the side of each row. Great, all right, last row here. There we go. Perfect. All right, once you've made it to the very last row or the end of this row, you're going to chain three. So after every single row in this pattern, you chain three. One, two, three. Turn your work. That chain three will always count as your first double crochet stitch in this pattern, okay? For this pattern, next row, you will make one double crochet stitch in the very first stitch space here. And that will count as your very first increase double crochet right here. So these two double crochet stitches make an increase double crochet in that first stitch. You're going to make one double crochet in each stitch all the way across. And in the very last stitch, so on the in the third chain of the chain three, one, two, three, you'll make two double crochet stitches in that third chain right there. All right, okay, go ahead and continue on and I'll meet you at the very end of this row to show you what to do next. Last stitch here, this is the chain three, so making one, and two double crochet stitches in that third chain. Perfect. Let's move on to the next row. Chain three. One, two, three. Turn our work. That chain three again counts as our first double crochet stitch. We are basically just going to repeat this increase double crochet, one double crochet in each stitch across, increase double crochet in the last stitch, pattern until or for the chest until we reach the top of the legs okay that's the part we are working on right now is the chest section all right go ahead and finish this section and i will meet you when once you have reached the very last row there to show you what to do next This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives like you and me. It's a place where we can take ourselves to the next level of our creative journey. There are thousands of different videos on Skillshare that we can sift through to really help level ourselves up and get better at whatever it is that we are doing. I use Skillshare on a number of different things, whether it be crochet techniques that I'm not very familiar with, Etsy and how to sell my crocheted items, photography and how to take even better pictures of my items, color theory and what colors work best with each other and how they affect your mood. And now I'm leveling myself up even more by figuring out how to crochet clothing. And there's a video on Skillshare right now that I'm really enjoying. It's called How to Crochet a Crop Top by Roseanne Murray. She does a great job at teaching you how to crochet clothing and how to make adjustments to make that clothing fit better or make you more confident in whatever it is that you are wearing. You don't have to just go on Skillshare for crochet related items. They have a number of different resources that you can sift through to try something new or just, like I said, up your game, level yourself up. And they are constantly updating their videos, giving you the most relevant, the newest information, making them a great resource in whatever it is you are looking for. And for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, it is going to be a valuable asset in whatever it is that you are doing. Skillshare is offering us a gift. The first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link below to check out Skillshare, sift through the videos and figure out if it is for them, get to try a premium membership absolutely free. 
You get to try it for free, checking it all out to make sure it is the right fit for you before you even have to get an annual subscription, but you're gonna find that you really want that annual subscription, I'm pretty sure. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to making that dog coat. Last row, last stitch for the chest section of the dog sweater or the dog coat. There we go, increased double crochet stitch. We have finished the chest section. Now we are about to work the armholes for this dog sweater. The center section of this dog sweater or dog coat is going to be running along the dog's back. Then it's gonna be armhole, armhole. And these two sides right here, this side and this side, will sew together and that will be the underbelly of the dog, okay? We're gonna start with section one, which is just this side right here. You're gonna chain three. One, two, three. Turn your work. That chain three counts as our first double crochet stitch and we'll take the very first stitch space. So depending on what size dog coat you are making, if you're making a small, you will double crochet in the next four stitches. If you're making a medium, you will double crochet in the next seven stitches. A large, you will double crochet in the next 11 stitches. And an extra large, you'll double crochet in the next 15 stitches. Of course, if you are making adjustments, your dog's arms are wider than the pattern calls for. Just go ahead and account for that giving your dog a few extra stitches right here. Just go ahead and make sure it's even. Whatever you do on this side, you'll have to do on this side. So if you want to adjust however many stitches you make on this side, keep it consistent. If you need to make dimensions or find dimensions for your dog, measure between the arms, the front arms. So if this is your dog's left, or left arm or right arm, other dog's arm, measuring in between the arms, divide that number in half, and that is what we're gonna be working right here, okay? All right, so I'm making the medium-sized dog sweater, so I'm going to make seven double crochet stitches, skipping the first because the chain three takes that space. So double crochet in the next, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then stop. Chain three. One, two, three. Turn your work. All right, so for row two of side one, we're just going to Make one double crochet in each stitch across. Remember the chain three does count as your first double crochet. Taking the very first stitch space, you're going to make one double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. If you are making a small dog coat, you will repeat this row for a total of two more rows through row three. So one, two, three. If you're making a medium sized coat, you'll repeat this row through row five. And if you're making a large or extra large size dog coat, you will repeat this row through row seven. All right, go ahead and continue on and I will meet you at the end of your row to show you what to do next. Last stitch here, perfect. Okay, once you have finished all of your rows for section one, grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail for you to weave in your ends, yarn over and pull that yarn through the loop on your crochet hook, pull tight for a slip knot, fastening off section one. Let's move on to section two. We are now going to make the middle section of our dog coat. So if you are making a small size dog coat, you will skip four stitches. One, two, three, four. If you are making a medium sized dog coat, you will skip seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you are making a large size dog coat, you will skip nine. And if you are making an extra large dog coat, you will skip 12. Again, this is the first armhole 
And so we need to account for how much space we need to give our dog for their arm. If you are needing to adjust, this is where you will adjust. Okay, so I am making a medium size, so I will skip seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the eighth stitch, so in the very next stitch, you're going to slip stitch to attach your yarn to your project. There we go. Chain three. One, two, three. That chain three counts as our first double crochet stitch. You will continue on to make one double crochet stitch in the next. If you're making a small dog coat, you will make one double crochet in the next 21 stitches. If you're making a medium size, you will make one double crochet in the next 33 stitches. Making a large size dog coat, you will make a double crochet in the next 53 stitches. And if you are making an extra large dog coat, you will make one double crochet in the next 63 stitches. Go ahead and continue on and I'll meet you at the very last stitch to show you what we do next to move on. One, two, three. All right, last stitch for this middle section right here. Perfect. All right, to move on to the next row, you will chain three. One, two, three. Turn our work. Great. Again, that chain three counts as our very first double crochet stitch. You will repeat what we did in section one and just make one double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across including making one double crochet stitch in the third chain of our first chain three right there. Remember that the chain three that we make counts as a double crochet stitch and takes up the space of that very first stitch, okay? You wanna copy how many rows you made in section one. So here I have one, two, three, four, five rows. So in section two, I need to make a total of five rows to be in line with each other, okay? So go ahead and continue finishing up section two. I will meet you at the end of section two to show you how we can move on to section three. Last stitch here, last row, perfect. That section, middle section is done. So grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail for us to weave in our end. Yarn over and pull that tail through the loop on your crochet hook. Pull tight to fasten off. Perfect. So now we've finished section one, section two, and we're on to section three. Taking our yarn, long enough tail for us to weave in our end, making a slip knot, attaching our crochet hook. Perfect. Okay, so again, depending on what size dog coat you are making, you are either going to skip four stitches, seven stitches, nine stitches, or 12 stitches. So I am making a medium sized dog coat, so I will skip seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and slip stitch into the very next stitch and that will attach the yarn to our work. Chain three, one, two, three. That chain three is our very first double crochet stitch. Okay, you will double crochet to the end of the work. Just closing us off right now. We don't wanna start on the outside and work our way in because then these stitches will look different than all of these stitches and these stitches, we wanna keep symmetry, so we're just gonna continue working the same direction all the way across. So again, we're making one double crochet in each stitch across, chain three to get to the next row, and we are going to continue making the same number of rows as we have in the middle. So in the middle here, I have one, two, three, four, five rows. So I will need to make a total of five rows in section three to keep everything level. Go ahead and finish off section three and I will meet you at the end to show you what we do next. Okay, last stitch, last row here of section three. 
perfect. All right, now I'm gonna show you what we do to connect all of these sections together. End of section three, we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. We're gonna turn our work. Okay, that, that chain three counts as our very first double crochet stitch and takes the space of that first stitch. Our next stitch will be a double crochet stitch in the second stitch here. You're gonna make one double crochet stitch in each stitch across. Even that chain three, you'll get, you'll put one double crochet stitch in that third chain right there. Perfect. Okay, once we've reached the end here, we will chain the same number of chains as stitches that we skipped. So for me, I skipped seven stitches here. So I need to chain seven stitches on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I will continue on making a double crochet stitch in that first stitch space. Double crochet. And now this line is going to be parallel. Continue making one double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across for section two. Once you get to the very end of section two, you will then chain the same number of chains of stitches that you skipped. So here I skipped seven, so I will chain seven here and continue making one double crochet stitch in the very first stitch space here, one double crochet stitch in each stitch across. I will meet you, so this is where I'm at. I will meet you at the very end of this row to show you what we do next. And double crochet in that last stitch. Okay, so this is what this row will end up looking like, move that little tail over there. Got a line here and the line here and that just closes up the armholes. Perfect, so what we do for the next row, we will chain three, one, two, three, turn our work. Next row, we're just making one double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across the work. That's all we are doing. Let me show you, okay, so that chain three does count as our first double crochet stitch, taking the very first stitch space. So our first double crochet stitch after that will be in the next stitch, okay? Making one double crochet stitch in each stitch. Let's get to the first arm hole so I can show you how to work that. Once you reach the chains, instead of crocheting over the chain, try crocheting into the chain. So finding the chain itself and making your double crochet stitch in the chain. It will help when we get to the point of actually finishing off the armhole. It'll also keep you on count, making sure you just have one double crochet stitch in each stitch across. Perfect. All right, go ahead and finish this up to the very end of this row. I'll meet you at the end of this row to show you what we do next. And last stitch of this row, boom, right there. Okay, now you need your tape measure. So grab your tape measure or your ruler, whatever you have handy. We are going to repeat this last row where it's just one double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across, then chain three to get to the next row. That chain three counts as your first double crochet stitch, so you'll skip the first stitch and make one double crochet in each stitch all the way across. You're gonna continue making these rows. It doesn't have a set number for you. So you're gonna use the tape measure. You're going to measure from, you're gonna put that zero line right at 
this section, this part of the armhole, and then measure up. So move this down a little bit so you can see. Perfect. Or you can come to the center, but that row we just finished is going to be the first row that counts in this measurement. If you are making a small size sweater, you're going to continue making uh, each row, one double crochet stitch and each stitch across until it measures four and a half inches. This section right here that we are making is the section that is going to be sewn together along the belly side of the dog. It is going to cover the chest cavity. So if you are making the dimensions adjustment to your dog, say for example, my dog is a wiener dog. So the back is much longer though the dog is really thin, right? So I want to elongate my dog coat. You're just going to measure the belly, the chest cavity, and stop where the chest, the rib cage ends. So you'll measure from, so the armpit, you'll measure from the armpit to where that chest cavity or that rib cage ends. And that is how long you will make this section of the dog coat. Okay? All right, continue on, and I will meet you at the end of this section to show you what we do next. You've got this. One, two, three. Okay, double crochet. And last double crochet stitch right there. All right, let me go ahead and measure to see where I am at. So armhole, zero, right there. Measure it out, and I hit seven inches, perfect. I am making the medium-sized dog coat, so that's exactly where I want to be. Okay, so we have finished this part of the dog coat. This part will eventually be sewn together, so this will be at the bottom of the belly of the dog coat. We are now going to start working on the very back of the dog coat. This is, dog tail would be over here, okay? So we're going down the dog's back leading up to the dog's tail. So we will begin by actually starting to taper this inward. Once you have reached your dimension here in the chest, we will turn our work. We're not chaining. Do not chain anything. I'll show you why. We are going to want to enter into the work so that way it's going around the dog's leg making it comf a comfortable fit for the dog, okay? The way we're going to do this is we're going to slip stitch into the work. If you are making a small sized dog coat, you're going to slip stitch in the first seven stitches here, okay? If you are making adjustments for your dog coat, I would, if you're going larger than the extra large, I would start by slip stitching in the first 19 stitches and seeing how that works for you, okay? This is basically meaning we've stopped at the dog's chest where the rib cage stops, and now we are working our way inward just so we can focus on protecting the dog's back. So I'm making a medium-sized dog coat, so I'm going to slip stitch in the first 10 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Okay, once we have reached this section, we will chain three. One, two, three. That chain three does count as our very first double crochet stitch. You will make one double crochet stitch. If you're working a small dog coat, you will make one double crochet stitch in the next 27 stitches for a total of 28. So this would be number one and then 27 more, total 28 double crochet stitches. Knowing what size you're working with, go ahead and make that number of double crochet stitches and I will meet you at the end to show you what we do next. 45 and 
46. Great. Okay, I've reached the last double crochet stitch for my particular pattern, the size of my dog coat. You will chain three. One, two, three. Turn your work. Okay. At this point, what we are doing is we are going to start tapering the bottom part of this dog coat. Every single row here on out is going to play out like this. You chain three to get to the new row. That counts as your first double crochet stitch. The next stitch you're going to make is a double crochet to tog. So these next two stitches right here, you're going to double crochet together. Then you will make one double crochet in each stitch across, leaving the last three double crochet stitches alone. The first two double crochet stitches, you will do a double crochet to tog to close those two together, and you will end by double crocheting in the third chain of that very last double crochet stitch. You're going to repeat that pattern for the next however many rows until pulling out our tape measure again. Going to measure, find the ribbing of the neck, the neck ribbing right here. Your zero marker will begin at the bottom of that neck ribbing. Measure it. Okay. You will repeat that row until you have met measurement. The measurement that you're going for, if you're making a small dog sweater, you are going for a total of 10 and a half inches. Again, if you are making your dog coat longer than their extra large size, then you can continue to taper downward. You can adjust this however you would like to adjust this. That is just where you're going to measure from and how many rows you, it doesn't exactly indicate what row to stop at. It just says continue to repeat this until you've hit that measurement. Okay? Again, chain three is our first double crochet stitch. We're going to double crochet to tog the next two stitches together. And then one double crochet in each stitch across, leaving the last three stitches alone. All right, last three double crochet stitches of this row. The first two, I'm going to double crochet to tog. There we go. And double crochet in the third chain of that chain three to close off this row. Okay, just repeat this row that we just finished over and over and over, however many times you need to until you have reached your measurement. Okay, I will meet you at that point to show you the next step. You are doing it fantastic. Keep up the great work. Last stitch here, double crochet. And I have met my dimension. I have already measured it out and I hit the 16 inch mark. Once you have reached your dimension, go ahead and take your scissors. Cut a tail long enough for you to weave in your ends at the end of the project. Yarn over and pull that tail through the loop on your crochet hook. Pull tight for a slip knot, and we have fastened off our work. Perfect! Okay, so we have just finished the main body of our dog coat here. What we're going to do next is find the side that you like best. So look at both sides. This side here has a little bit of a yarn flaw, so I want that to be on the inside of the dog coat. You're going to take the side you want on the inside and flip that down. So you're looking at the side you want showing out to everybody, okay? Pull the whole thing in half. All right, line that dog armhole here. Take your yarn, starting at the top of the neck, the very, very top here, we're going to now sew these two sides together all the way down to this point right here, and then stop, 
okay? How I am going to do this is I'm going to pull out my yarn needle tapestry needle right there and take my scissors. I'm gonna take a long piece of yarn. It's okay if you don't give yourself enough. You can always cut more and reattach. Okay, threading your needle. Perfect. Come to the very top here. Through both sides. Great. Leaving a tail long enough to weave in that end. You're going to tie a knot. And I like to tie two knots just to make sure it's extra strong. And then taking your needle just go over and then through both sides. Over, through both sides. Now you don't have to be a perfectionist on this. This is all being done on the inside of the work. We will be flipping it inside out to show the actual outside. So everything that you do here, don't worry about it showing, it won't show when we flip it. Go ahead and continue sewing all the way down. I'll meet you right here to show you what we do next. Coming up on the very end here. All right. There we go. I have barely enough. I made it just to the end. It's too small. So what I'm going to do for myself, I'm going to take my blank empty needle. I'm going to go insert it right there. I'm going to take this yarn, this tail, I'm going to loop it as if it were attached in the little eye hole. I'm going to twist it to form that X shape I was talking about. Take the needle, put it in the hole right there, and then I will thread the needle, pull it through, and that will make that slip knot that I want. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so we have just sewn the two sides together all the way down the middle. This will be along the belly and the chest of the dog. Flip it outside right. So now the side that we wanted on the outside facing everybody is now on the outside right here looking at us. Perfect. Okay, so the next step that we're going to be working on we're gonna to come to the bottom of this dog coat right here and we're going to make a border around this bottom to just clean everything up, clean up all the edges here, make it look pretty. So taking our large crochet hook and whatever color you wanna use for the border, long enough tail for us to weave in our ends, slip knot, attach our crochet hook, Perfect. So I like to begin right where these two sides were just sewn together and joined. So I will insert my crochet hook into the top of that stitch for the side right here. This is where they were joined together. Slip stitch to attach the yarn and then chain one. I'm gonna leave my tail out because I wanna weave in my tail. I don't wanna crochet over it. And then single crochet back into the same stitch we just slip stitched into. And make one single crochet in each stitch all the way up to this first side. 
some working. Okay, I've reached where the dog coat has started to taper. Each one of these rows has a double crochet stitch or a chain three at the side of that row. So on the side of each row, we need to make two single crochet stitches, okay? So the side of this row, one, two. Side of this row, one, two. Side of this row, one, two, and last row right here, one, two, single crochet into the top of the chain three, right there. So it'll look like there's three single crochet stitches there, but really that's just gonna help us to turn onto this flat side of the dog coat. And this is the very, very bottom. We're just gonna make one single crochet stitch in each stitch across. All right, we have come upon the bottom here, the corner. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one single crochet in that last stitch, leaving the tail out because I'm gonna weave that in at the end of the project. I'm going to turn the work and start working along the sides of these rows. So the first row, making two single crochet stitches. Next row, two single crochet stitches. Next row, two single crochet stitches. And that is that row. Okay, so next row, two single crochet stitches. Great, made it to the very bottom here and just making one single crochet stitch in each stitch to close up the bottom. These are going to be where your slip stitches were at, so it might be a little tricky, but you can do it. You got this. Perfect. Once you have made it all the way back around, I'm gonna have you, oh, I got one more stitch. There we go. Single crochet, perfect. Once you've made it all the way around, slip stitch into the very first single crochet stitch that you made to join and close. Grab our scissors, cutting a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends. We're gonna have a lot of ends to weave in, but that is okay. And slip knot, perfect. The bottom of our dog coat is finished. The only thing we'll need to do now is weave in our ends, but it is all cleaned up. It looks great. Great job. Okay, last thing we're going to work on are these armholes here. We're gonna pretty them up, okay? First thing we're going to do is single crochet around the armhole itself to make it really easy for us to attach the armhole cuff. So taking our large crochet hook and our yarn, start with a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends, make a slip knot, attaching our crochet hook. Okay, you can really begin wherever you would like to begin keeping all those tails aside. I'm gonna start in the bottom corner right here. Slip stitch to actually attach your yarn to your project. There we go. Chain one and single crochet in the same stitch you just slip stitched into to attach your yarn. Now you're going to make one single crochet stitch in each stitch across. Okay. Oop. Okay. Stitch perfect. 
trying to make this easy for you to see. It's a little wonky. Okay, so I just made one single crochet in each stitch across the bottom here. Now we're on to crocheting up the sides of these rows. Remember, each row has a double crochet stitch, so we will make two single crochet stitches in the side of each row. If you need help identifying where the rows are, you can spread out your work and you'll be able to identify where your row is. Okay, so two single crochets on the side of each row. One, two. Next row, one, two. Next row, one, two, one, two, one, two. Last row here, one, two. Okay, turning, moving the tail out of the way. Okay, we're now dealing with stitches again. So one single crochet per stitch. Great, and back to the last side of this dog armhole. And again, we're working on the sides of rows, so two single crochet per row. Okay, last row, one, two, perfect. So I actually had pre-cut. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the very first single crochet that I made, insert my crochet hook into that very first single crochet, yarn over, pull through, pull through all the way for a slip stitch, and then yarn over that tail if you haven't cut your yarn yet, now you would cut your yarn, leaving a long enough tail for you to weave in your ends. I left with a nub, so I'm just gonna yarn over that teeny tiny tail, pull it through the loop on my crochet hook, and pull tightly for a slip knot and a close. So this is what you should be left with looking at. We just single crocheted all the way around this armhole. Now, when we go to attach, our arm cuff, we will be able to sew into each one of these stitches, making it really easy for us to attach. What I'm going to have you do now is repeat what we just did for this armhole over here, and I will meet you as soon as you're done single crocheting around this armhole to start working on the arm cuff. All right, great. Both of our armholes are done and ready for the cuff, the band. It's called a leg band in the pattern. We're going to take the color that you want to make your leg band, and we're going to take the smaller crochet hook. We're bringing that back out. Okay, starting with a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends, creating a slip knot, attaching our crochet hook. Perfect. We will start by chaining six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Row one, we're going to single crochet into the second chain. One, and one single crochet in each chain all the way across. Should leave you with only five stitches. Uh, come on, there we go. All right, chain one, turn your work. And for each row here on out, you're going to make one single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch. This will create that ribbing. All right, so in the pattern, again, it does not give you a set number of rows that you need to make. You are only given a tape measure de measurement. So pull out your tape measure. If you are making a small dog coat, you're going to repeat this row two 
single crochet back loop only until your cuff reaches five inches. If you're making a medium sized dog coat, you're going to continue row two until your leg band reaches six inches. A large, you're gonna go eight inches and an extra large, you're gonna go nine and a half inches repeating row two here, okay? So go ahead and finish that up, meeting the dimension, the length, and I will meet up with you then to show you what you will do next. All right, guys, we are almost done here. All we have to do now is sew the two edges of your arm band together and then sew this band onto your dog coat. And this coat is done, it's complete. So let's get to this, shall we? Okay, taking the extra long tail that we cut ourselves and threading our yarn needle or tapestry needle. Okay, taking the two sides of this armband, we're gonna actually fold this in half so we can sew them together. There we go. Leave this tail alone, we're not gonna mess with it. Take this armband and flip it inside out. Okay, here we go. Taking our dog coat, lining up our, the stitches here. I like to align it with a corner. So there's a lot of stitches already happening in this corner, a lot of tails in this corner. So I'm gonna make my tail in another corner that doesn't already have a tail. So that way there's not so much crowding going on. Start in this corner. Gonna go through the corner, most stitch, and then attach the armband. Okay, find the next stitch here and go through the next stitch and so on and so forth. You may find that there are more stitches on the outer part of this dog coat than there are stitches number of rows to sew this into. And if that happens, you can absolutely just do more stitches per rows to attach. Do what you can to make it work. Another way that you could approach this cuff is if you wanted to take it and stretch it out to meet the sides and then somehow attach either with a safety pin, with a row marker, some kind of clip, and just clip everything, that way you know, okay, that's how many stitches I'm going to need to get in that side to make this evenly spaced about, if that makes any sense. Great, once you've made it all the way around, so this is the little dar dog armhole little cuff, little band, whatever they're gonna call it. So cute. You want that shallow for the dog's leg. Create a little knot. Okay, again, I'm taking the yarn. I twist it so it makes that X shape right there. Take my needle, go under that big hole right there, if you can see that X shape. Go in the hole from the bottom and then slowly feed it through. Perfect. And then what you're going to do, guys, is just repeat second band, second armhole. Take a second, attach this second band, and I will meet you when you're done attaching that band just to show you the last step. Great guys, you have done a fantastic job. We have attached both of these leg bands for our sleeves for our dog sweater. We have made the seam. All you have left to do to complete your dog sweater is to weave in all of your mini ends and I know there's a lot, I know. Make sure you go on the inside too 
inside out. Make sure all of these get woven in and then your dog sweater is done. It's complete. Oh, and I hope you love it and I hope you make many and play with colors and ah, oh, this was so much fun. I hope you had fun too. Like Barrett, come here. Put this on you. Ugh. Come here. There we go. <laughs> All right, you got this. Come on. And your arm. Your little arm. There's little arm number one. And your little arm number. And put it on you. Oh! <laughs> Barrett, come here! Come here! Come here, Barrett! Come here! Come here! <laughs> he ran away! Alright guys, so what did you think of this dog coat? I hope you love it. I hope you had a lot of fun. If you did, you might also really like these videos right here. Also check out that video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Deviate from this pattern however you want to to really personalize this dog coat. Maybe make it in stripes, make a different color for the cuffs opposed to the main body. Pick colors for your dog coat that would complement the fur, the color of the fur of your puppy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys. <laughs> what are you doing? Stuff. Nothing. You're recording. No, I'm not. She's so recording. Cute. You're recording. Bob, you're recording. You're I'm recording. Not. Do a Skillshare ad. No. Come on. Just like, so, just like, I'm going to delete it. Just like, do a Skillshare ad. No. What would you say? This is sponsored by Skillshare. Subscribe to Skillshare. <laughs> Skillshare is where you can learn to do a bunch of stuff for like $1, and it's really cool. And I even learned how to make a quesadilla there. So subscribe. So go to Skillshare.com slash Tiffany Hansen to get 1% off your, your, your thing. Get Skillshare right now. Yeah. Do it right now. Yeah. Go to yeah. Skillshare.com. Yeah.